What do you say to clients who are worried about greenwashing? What needs to be done to assure them that your ESG uh, ambitions are not that? So I'm afraid it's a matter of looking carefully at how the money that they've invested is being used. I think the trigger is this. If it looks as if it's an afterthought, it's something that's almost to make it a product that looks green, then it's probably not green. But if it's integrated in the actual investment process, and if it's integrated because it makes sense from an investment point of view, then it probably is green. I will say, however, the fact that people are greenwashing is a good sign. I know this sounds controversial, because it shows that the asset managers realize that the demand from the investment community, from society, from governments is increasing and that the opportunities are there. The danger is that they lose this opportunity. Um, so look very carefully, see if it's integrated, see if the companies that do invest actually walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Good morning, Sacker. So it's important that it's integrated, the ESG intentions, not an afterthought. But I'm curious to know whether you see sustainable investing as more about risk mitigation strategy or is it more about the impact you can have in the sector? Do you know, that's a really, really good question. Uh, and I, I'm afraid the answer is a bit of both. Uh, I think there's been a general acceptance and there's been a shift over the last five years that it is a risk mitigation strategy, meaning uh, if you are in fact investing and including sustainability, you're uh, guarding yourself against possible downsides that you haven't seen on all three fronts, the ES and the G. But on the other hand, I think there's a missed opportunity here and it falls in two ways. The first one is it blinds you to the upside opportunity that if you integrate sustainability, actually it opens the path to finding new ways in which you can increase margins and that's the way to go. And the second one is we've done some research at Federated Hermes and this goes back all the way back to when we were Hermes and there's clear evidence that companies that change from non-sustainable practices to, pra to sustainable practices in fact outperform stocks that are similar to theirs in their sector. In past crises and the financial crisis, of course, ESG was more nascent at that point, but we saw a lot of that get thrown out the window to concentrate on just protecting portfolios. We're undergoing through another crisis, and ESG is especially fascinating now considering the U.S. is asking companies to, to put out more oil. We need to diversify away from Russian oil. Are we in a period now where ESG, those concerns, also need to be put to the side temporarily in order to solve this issue we're facing of trying to become less reliant on Russian oil? So I think the question that we should be asking ourselves is about time horizons. Um, ESG has always been about long-term investing rather than short-term trading. That's why I say it should be integrated and not just an afterthought. Mm -hmm. Let's take the issue of oil. Um, the appalling crisis in the Ukraine and what's been unfolding, one of the lessons it tells us is that we should have had more renewable energy coming into it. Now, right now, right here, we need to produce more gas, more oil to try to meet the demand. Yes, of course we do. But in the long term, to defend ourselves, this is talking strategically and economically, uh, against being held hostage uh, by regimes which might be unstable, clearly we need other sources of of energy. So even in the question of carbon, and sustainability is much bigger than carbon, it's a matter of time horizon. It always has been. That's why I say it should be integrated. And that's why we talk about not just sustainability, but also about stewardship. And stewardship is talking to companies about the long term. We're not asking people to change their faith. That is a ridiculous thing to mm. do. What we're asking companies so, is to so have long term horizons. Yeah. Saka, good morning. Oh, sorry, again, uh, on that idea of time horizons, you kind of make the point that it is about long-term investment, uh, and that makes sense from an investment point of view. I'm curious about from an impact point of view and from when you expect kind of reaction uh, from the, the, the company. So first of all, how do you communicate those time horizons in terms of your impact on the companies to your clients? And what do you expect from companies in terms of them making the moves towards your targets of engagement? How, how much time do you give them and at what point do you divest in companies if they're not changing policy quick enough? Well, I mean, um, so let's start backwards from your last question. Uh, what happens if one divests from a company? You, you're not starving it of capital. Uh, the fact that index funds uh, form a large part of the market means that they can always have capital. Very few companies come to the marketplace asking for capital. What we're trying to do is change companies' behaviors. Over the last 
30 odd years of the old Hermes and now unfederated Hermes, our stewardship teams have been engaging with companies to convince them that actually changing is for their benefit. And we can show them proof that it does work. Now, that means it's a long term issue. You cannot say to people to change just to have an impact immediately. You'll have to explain to them that to make changes to have impact in the long term. And corporates get this. Listen to what the corporates said in Glasgow. Most of them, in fact, embrace this. Even in the United States, there is a movement towards embracing this. There's some questions about short-term issues, particularly about oil. Mm -hmm. But in general, in general, people accept that actually um, having, let's call it responsible capitalism, is going back to Adam Smith's dictums, which is actually how free markets should work if we go back to the original theory. So while we have you here, I want to broaden our conversation out to the wider economy. And it's a debate that Mark has been having with plenty of people that we've been having throughout programming, which is a curve inverts. Is this a warning signal of a recession? So 2s 30s is now inverted. 2s 10s has stayed <laughs> inverted. Does this change your outlook of the global economy and specifically the U.S. economy? So, so far, no, it does not. I mean, I think the United States economy is particularly strong. Uh, it has a lot of resilience factors. It's not dependent on either outside uh, energy or outside food, mm. both of which are important. Therefore, it has resilience. You look at the employment numbers, they're very strong indeed. Uh, you look at uh, new house builds, they're very strong indeed. So all the indicators are there. The indicator that worries is an inflationary shock, which we know is coming down the line. Is it big enough to try to derail the U.S. economy? I don't think so. The same might not be true of the European economies, but we'll have to wait and see because they're less resilient, they're more dependent on imported uh, energy, and I'd argue they're slightly more, uh, not dependent, but sensitive to uh, the world markets. Mm. And then you get to the emerging markets you were discussing China just before yeah. I came on, so I'm not going to add to that discussion. <laughs> Did, did, does a focus on sustainable investing, on ESG investing, give you an edge on reading the economy, given your long-term take, or do you think it's no, no different from other areas of investing? So it's an interesting one. I mean, I'd argue that um, all investing should be sustainable investing, and it does give you an edge if you're a long-term investor. We go back to the short-term, long-term issue. Um, long-term investing, by and large, allows you to walk your way through crises and market cycles and do better in the long term and sustainable investing certainly allows you that it also and this is crucial allows you to see opportunities in changing consumer demand and changing government regulations uh, in, in in changing societal expectations that perhaps other forms of investing does not do and again our experience is it does allow you to outperform over the long term so it is in fact a value add not just a risk mitigant and that's been the lesson of the old Hermes going back years and Federated Hermes now as we go forward.